this lecture, we're going to summarize the first law of thermodynamics equations that we have um, at our disposal. We'll introduce the concept of adiabatic processes and then use that to derive the dry adiabatic lapse rate for the atmosphere. So starting off with our first law of thermodynamics, uh, on the left hand column over here we have the equations at our disposal uh, from the intensive form of the first law of thermodynamics and over here on this side we have the uh, same equations for the extensive version. So we had dq is equal to the change in the internal energy plus the work done on the system. Uh, we determined that the internal energy of the system was C sub V dt and that the work was PD alpha. And then we also transformed this using the concept of enthalpy to say that the change in the, um, the adiabatic heating, uh, in this case, is equal to the enthalpy minus alpha dp. And we did that to uh, have a form of the equation that would be nice to work at under constant pressure. I want to quickly get to two different forms of the first law of thermodynamics that you have not yet seen. And these come by combining the first law of thermodynamics with the hydrostatic equation. Remember the hydrostatic equation has certain assumptions in it um, and those assumptions will then be folded into the first law of thermodynamics. So the first law of the hydrostatic equation states that dp by dc is equal to minus density times gravity. Uh, just read a, uh, bringing the density over to this side and the dc to that side, 1 over the density is equal to the specific volume times dp is equal to gdz. And if you recall, you know, gdz is equivalent to our change in geopotential. And so if you take this minus alpha dp and substitute in either gdz or d phi, into that equation, you get two different forms of the first law of thermodynamics that could be useful depending upon what it is you're trying to solve for. Uh, the first is looking at the uh, adiabatic heating is equal to the uh, change in the enthalpy plus GDZ, which you might actually recognize as energy, which makes sense because we have that right down here as being the uh, dQ is equal to C sub P dt plus the change in the geopotential. <coughs> we haven't yet mentioned this, but the laboratory values for the specific uh, heat for dry air, uh, C sub V D and C sub P for D for dry air only, uh, are 717 joules per K per kilogram and 1004 joules per K per kilogram. I'd like to, at this point, introduce the concept of an adiabatic process. An adiabatic process is one where you have an air parcel that does not exchange mass with its environment, and it has no exchange of energy between the air parcel and the environment. This air parcel is completely isolated from the environment, uh, but it can do work on the environment by expanding if necessary but it will not uh, exchange mass or energy with the environment directly. And uh, by definition, adiabatic uh, indicates that dq is equal to zero. So let's look at this word adiabatic. So you might think of the word typical and atypical. They're exact opposites. And that's the exact same case for this. We have a diabatic heating term, q, and then we have adiabatic, or adiabatic, which means that there's no heating which means that dq is equal to zero. And we're going to use that concept and one of these equations to determine what the dry adiabatic lapse rate is for the Earth's atmosphere. So if you want to do a lapse rate, you're trying to get uh, a dt by dz. And which form of the equation might be most useful for getting an adiabatic lapse rate? It's going to be this form right here, dq is equal to c sub p dt plus gdz, because it already has a dt by, and a dz in it. So that's the form of the equation we're going to use. Um, we set dq equal to zero for an adiabatic condition, uh, and then we start to algebraically solve for dt by dz. And you'll come up with dt by dz is equal to a constant minus 
the, the gravity divided by the specific gas, excuse me, the specific heat of dry air at constant pressure. And that's equivalent numerically to minus 9.81 meters per second squared divided by 1,004 joules per K per kilogram for C sub PD. Um, if you do that, you get minus 9.8 times 10 to the minus third Kelvin per meter. But we usually express that in terms of degrees Celsius per kilometer. And so you just have to multiply that by 1,000 in order to end up with the uh, lapse rate dt by dz is equal to 9.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer. Interestingly enough, we define the lapse rate as gamma d is defined as minus dt by dz. And since dt by dz was minus here, uh, that actually uh, translates into a lapse rate, a dry adiabatic lapse rate of 9.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer. But we know that the temperature is going to be decreasing with height and increasing as you move further down into the atmosphere. And so what this means is if you grab an air parcel and you isolate it from its environment by allowing no mass exchange and no energy ex exchange, and it's a completely dry air parcel, as you lift this air parcel, it will always decrease at a constant rate of minus 9.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer. And if you grab that air parcel up at some altitude above the surface and bring it down toward the surface, its temperature will increase at 9.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer. And that will occur as long as the adiabatic assumption is met. 